one of the biggest series of the year in the Pac-12, a top 10 matchup in the desert. The defending national champion Oregon State Beavers roll into Tempe ranked third in the nation, looking to make a statement on the road. They'll be taking on one of the best stories this season in college baseball, the ninth ranked Arizona State Sun Devils. We've got studs all over the diamond tonight at Muni. Number three, Oregon State, and number nine, Arizona State, starts now on Pac-12+. Plus. And with that, we welcome you inside Phoenix Muni. I am Braden Bell, joined alongside former Sun Devil Grant Schneider. Ryan Ober will lead things off for Oregon State. Scoreless through one frame, but oh boy, how close Arizona State was to scratching one across. Three walks in the inning for the Devils. They had the bases loaded with two outs, and Lyle Lynn just grounded out to this man right here, Ryan Ober, as he digs in. The sophomore from Washington will take on Alec Marsh, who had a great first inning. And first pitch swinging is Ober. Shallow pop up. Center field, Hunter Bishop makes the catch. One pitch, one out, and a perfect way for Marsh to start his second. Yeah, Arizona State coming off of that bases loaded opportunity in the bottom of the first and didn't, you know, capitalize on that situation. Alec Marsh doesn't care. He's back on the mound, throwing a first pitch strike, first pitch out. So this guy's in a groove right now, and, and he's showing it. Here's Alec McGarry. Five home runs, 17 RBIs, that 292 average. Left-hander looks at strike one, and you mentioned it, Marsh appears to be pretty comfortable. That first at bat, Tyler Malone sent a drive out to right center field, but ever since, Marsh has calmed down and has commanded the strike zone, and that's what you want to see from your Friday night guy, especially after a rough outing like we talked about earlier that he had last week against USC. It's one and one to McGarry. Uh, unbelievable action on that changeup. I don't know if you saw that. That was crazy. The wind's blowing, you know, in with Marsh, so he's got a little extra help from the wind. That one's driven well out to right field. Back at the wall is Aldretti, and it is gone. Alex McGarry, a line drive shot over the right field wall. That's home run number seven on the year for McGarry. And the Beavers strike first here on a Friday night in Phoenix. One to nothing, Oregon State. That was a really, really good swing there by McGarry. Alec Marsh with a fastball on the first pitch, a changeup second pitch, and McGarry was ready to swing at that fastball on the inner half of the plate and send it right over close to the scoreboard. Great job of capitalizing on an early strike and putting the Beavers up 1-0. to zero. So right after we talked about Marsh settling in, McGarry wastes no time. A line drive shot. They got out of here quickly. And Oregon State strikes first as Matthew Gretler digs in. Strike one into Gretler. Six foot 170. Not much of a power hitter. As he looks at a breaking ball in there and it's quickly 0-2 from Marsh. Now it's about trying to settle down if you're Alec Marsh, right? After that tough outing against USC, a clean first inning and you don't let one solo home run get you off the tracks. I was just about to say that. A solo home run doesn't hurt you. Real, really good slider there by Alec Marsh. That was nasty, no doubt about it, as Gretler was completely fooled, backed out of the zone before it was even called a strike by William Van Ramphorst, and there are two away. You know, like I was mentioning, you know, solo home runs don't hurt you. It's when you walk guys and you get them on base, and then it turns into two, three-run home runs. And so that, that's been kind of the story of ASU the past four games is walks and, and not, you know, controlling the strike zone. And so, I mean, tip your cap, you know. McGarry got a, got a good pitch, and, and so you live with it. Marsh did a really good job of, you know, flipping the script and, and you know, getting a strikeout right after that home run. Mendezona now up for Oregon State. The third baseman looks at ball one. Marsh trying to settle down after that solo shot. Misses low and inside. It's 2-0. and You mentioned the walks, the errors, the sloppy players Arizona State has played with the last four or five games or so, and it almost looked like they'd gone back to last year's struggles and trying to get back with the magic we saw for the majority of this season obviously that great record they have and they'll have to play that way this weekend against such a good team in Oregon State. Exactly every team goes through their skids right ASU you know just happened to be in, kind of in the middle of the season after going whatever it was 21 and 0 or, or I forget the exact number I mean it's just unbelievable but 25 and 1 at a time. There we go. And, yeah, so everybody goes through their skids, and, and ASU just went through there. So, um, you know, it all started with that game against U of A 
that <laughs> ugly one, five and a half hours and lots of runs. So. 3-1 breaking ball. This should end the inning. Swift gets it over to Torkelson, and it does. Oregon State strikes first. The fifth home run off of Marsh in 2019 is off the bat of Alex McGarry. He puts Oregon Concrete State on top one to nothing. So the Devils will look to respond when we come back on Pac-12+. 7-8-9 due up for Arizona State as we head to the bottom of the second here on Pac-12+. It's turned into a beautiful evening in Phoenix, Arizona. And Gage Workman will try to get things going for the Devils here in the home half of the second up against Brandon Isard. And a very interesting opening frame for Isard as you look at Workman digging in, that 303 average, three homers, 23 RBIs, but he's in the midst of a pretty big skid right now, just three for his last 24. Tracy Smith sticking with him, however, as he looks at an 87 mile an hour heater for strike one on the outside corner. Yeah, Workman plays too good a defense not to keep him in the ball game, so, you know, drop down a little bit in the order and still looking to, you know, Get that magic back up. No oh, one, same spot, a little more outside. One ball and a strike to Gage Workman. Even though, kind of like this whole team, like you just mentioned before we took it to break, Grant. Workman in a little bit of a skid right now, but that happens naturally in the game of baseball, and I think it was easy for Arizona State fans to assume it happened all year long. The magic is Workman grounds out to second base for out number one, but that's just not the way this game works. Exactly. You, you hit three out of your ten appearances, right? You're in the Hall of Fame for, for Major League Baseball. So baseball is a game of failure, and ASU hasn't really experienced that much failure early in this season. It all comes, man. Sam Ferry now digs in for Arizona State, and I think a lot of the credit for the pitching staff, at least in the early part of the season, deserves to go to Sam Ferry, who missed all of last year, but has been an everyday backstop for Tracy Smith and company. And Ferry is a guy who is very important to this team. The numbers offensively obviously don't pop out at you necessarily, although they are still very solid but it's what he does behind the dish. It's been very impressive. The 1-0 to Ferry, fouled off. It's 1-1. One one. Yeah, Ferry holds his own at the plate, but he's really known as a defensive catcher. He's got an unbelievable arm and, and you know, is a, is a wall back there, especially with runners in scoring position. But he also, he's the captain of the team, right? He's a catcher and, you know, pitching staff, he keeps everybody under his wing and, and kind of has a good relationship with everyone, knows what they want to throw in each count and kind of, can work with everyone, settle them down if they're in a, a tight situation, what have you. So also it, it allows Lyle to focus more on hitting, right? I mean, we've seen his RBI numbers jump up to 34. Last year he had about 18 RBI. So, you know, Lyle, obviously he was, he was the full season catcher last year and kind of had to do both. And Ferry gets it done with a bat right there. First hit of the night for Arizona State comes courtesy of Sam Ferry. A one-out single on the 30th pitch of the night for Iser. And the Devils have a base runner now for the second consecutive inning. Putting the ball right where it was placed, right up the middle. Great job of handling the ball and hitting it hard on the ground. That's crucial, especially when the wind's blowing in. You want to keep the ball out of the air, Sam Ferry. Great job of getting on base. Drives it right back up the middle. A ground ball that Iser could not snag. Now it's Drew Swift. Second baseman for Arizona State. Possible bunting situation. We'll see whether or not he squares. He does not. And looks at ball one that temporarily got past Rutschman, but he's able to stick with it. And Ferry, not the quickest of runners on the base pass, was not going anyways. <laughs> yeah, Ferry's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Ball's got to go all the way to the backstop. And that's probably not going to happen very nope. often against Rutschman. One to nothing early on. The lone tally, courtesy of Alex McGarry, a solo shot last inning for Oregon State. Nicert looks Ferry back and delivers the 1-0 pitch. A ball to Swift, and it's 2-0. It's a pretty good pitch there, going in on the hands of Drew Swift. Swifty and Alika, you're trying to, you know, if you're going to beat them, you got to go in. they got really good hands out over the plate. And so... For Isert, you know, he went in for Alika and trying to go back in for Swift. You mentioned Swift and what he's been able to do. He's been a fixture in the nine hole for Arizona State as he fouls one off down the first baseline. It's now two and two. 
a 420 on base percentage in the nine hole. That is basically a second leadoff batter, and that is incredibly valuable to any team. It's turning over the lineup, and it's giving your leadoff hitters a chance to hit with someone on base. Absolutely, and you're exactly right. Your nine hole hitter is usually your second leadoff, and Swift's done a really good job of owning that spot. Runner going, another ground ball up the middle, perfectly placed for Swift. Ferry's gonna go first to third. He dives in headlong and a beautiful bit of small ball for Arizona State. A single up the middle for Swift and the Devils have runners on the corners with just one away. Absolutely, that hit and run was done with perfection. Sam Ferry goes first to third. Ball is hit on the ground, exactly what you want for a hit and run and so Devils are in business here with one out. And in steps the leadoff hitter, however, and right on cue, we just told you how Swift gets on base on the nine hole. He does it again. Back-to-back -back singles for Arizona State's eight and nine hitters, basically in the exact same spot. So now runners on the corners for Trevor Halver, who popped out to Rochman, the catcher, his first time up. Three ninety-five clip with runners in scoring position for Halver. Trying to perhaps tie this ball game up for the Devils here in the bottom of the second. Nicer to work through some bumps. Here's his 35th pitch of the night. Breaking ball in the outside corner for strike one. And it seems like early on when he falls behind hitters, the Devils have had a lot of success. But when he's throwing first pitch strikes, he's as good as advertised. Exactly. What's interesting here, you got the second baseman, Matthew Gretler. He's playing real close to second base. Big hole over on the right side. And Trevor Hover likes to pull the ball. So... It's going to be an easy one if he can you know, get around something and push it over there. Breaking ball in the dirt. Good jump over there by Swift and no throw. That's a big time sequence, a breaking ball in the dirt that Rushman was able to stop. But it squirted away just enough. The speedy Swift advances to second. And now that changes everything. A ball on the ground now could tie this ball game. Oh, yeah. Absolutely perfect job by Drew Swift. Recognizing the pitch was in the dirt, not hesitating and getting all the way over to second base. Rutschman did a good job of stopping it. He probably could have thrown him out if Swift would have hesitated, but no chance there. Great opportunity for the leadoff man for Arizona State. One ball and one strike. And it's outside two and one. Dangerous count here to Trevor Hover. Good hitter's count for the Arizona State leadoff hitter. That 362 average. 30 RBIs, trying to add to that tally right now with two ducks on the pond. See what Iser tries to do here. The 2-1 pitch, just outside. Framed nicely by Rochman, but they're gonna call it a ball. It's three balls at a strike, with just one out, and trouble looming with Spencer Torkelson on deck. Real good pitch there. Kind of a pitcher's pitch, you hope the umpire gives it to you. Not today, though. See what Iser does on 3-1. Hit to the right side. It's going to find a gap. Scoring is Ferry. Swift will be held at third, but it's an RBI single for Trevor Halver, and the Devils have knotted things up in the bottom of the second. A frozen rope single, the third hit of the inning for Arizona State. Well, there it is. Trevor Halver pulling the ball to the right side. That's what you want. Less than two outs, run at scoring position. That ball's a liner kind of head high and so Swifty wasn't able to score from second had to hold up at third but really good job of Trevor Hover taking advantage of the 3-1 count and getting a run in not out of the jam yet so how about Arizona State three walks in the first inning now three hits in the second and just the fourth earned run of the season allowed by Brandon Isert has allowed Arizona State to tie it up in the bottom of the second Spencer Torkelson now digs in and we mentioned it in his first at bat He's red hot, hitting the long ball. Three straight games, hitting a home run for Torque. And it seems like every time he walks up into the batter's box, everyone kind of holds their breath. The shift is on for Oregon State. Three infielders on the left side of the infield, but it doesn't matter. He squirts one through the left side. An RBI single for Torkelson. And the line moves on for Arizona State. It's 2-1 Devils off of an RBI number 40 for Torkelson. It's 2-1 Arizona State. Yeah, shift all you want. Torkelson doesn't care. Three infielders on the left side of the infield and puts it right between 
Third base is in shortstop. Able to push Swifty home and got a runner in scoring position and another one at first base for Hunter Bishop. Now a 17 game hit streak for Spencer Torkelson. And like I mentioned, RBI number 40. And what a response for Arizona State. Scoring two right back after giving up the lead in the top of the second. That's crucial, man. If if Oregon State scores a run, ASU has to score one or more. You got to respond if you're going to win this ball game. It's going to be it's going to be a dogfight, man. I mean, <laughs> I can't stress that enough. These are two really good teams, and, and so ASU is doing a really good job of you know rising to the occasion for sure. And here's a really good player in Hunter Bishop, digging in. His first time up, he walked. Trying to pick up what his teammates have been doing as he swings over the top of a breaking ball and it's quickly 0-2 to Hunter. A little bit of an uncharacteristic swing from Hunter Bishop there. I think he was expecting a fastball and kind of you know, stepped in the bucket a little bit, pulled his hips open and swung over the top of that. How about a team in Arizona State who's known for hitting the long ball? Four straight singles to get on the scoreboard tonight against Oregon State. They'll do it however they have to. Comes the 0-2 to Bishop. And a good pitch by Isert to get Bishop swinging and missing. And a big out number two for the Beavers. Yeah, that's a huge out. It's a really good pitch too by Isert. Change up on the outer part of the plate, kind of leak back over. Just enough for Hunter Bishop to swing at it. Real good pitch by Isert, trying to minimize the damage here with two outs. A 482 on base percentage. That's what Alika Williams sports as he grounded out in the first inning and will have a chance with two away to try to tack on to this early lead for Arizona State. Two to one Devils. He swings on the first pitch, sends a slow ground ball out to Armstrong, who tosses over to second in time to get the runner. And that's it for Arizona State in the second. But four singles for the Devils, known as a power team. This time they do it with finesse, and they lead it two to one as we're through two at Muni. Grant, we have a treat this weekend here in Tempe. You look at the national rankings. First off, you'll notice quite a few teams from the Pac-12, but second off, you'll notice Arizona State ninth. You'll notice Oregon State third. We get to see both of those teams in action this weekend. Very fun, entertaining start to this game. The opening two frames, Arizona State on top two to one. But both these teams, they have higher aspirations than just this three-game weekend series. Obviously, Oregon State won it all last year, and Arizona State one of the best starts in program history. 25 and one at a time. They're trying to get back to Omaha for the first time since 2010. Yeah, this is a really crucial series for not only ASU and, and Oregon State, but the Pac-12, right? I mean, both these teams in the top of the Pac-12, top of the nation, and so it's gonna set them up well. You know, whoever comes out of the winning end of this thing, you know, for regional play and, and maybe the race to Omaha. This is the best series in the country this weekend. Oregon State and Arizona State. The 1-0 to Andy Armstrong, the shortstop, as he looks outside 2-0. Armstrong was scoring to bunt there. He's not known for his hitting. A defensive shortstop. In 28 games, he's hitting just 135. Marsh trying to work through Armstrong and get back going as he delivers a strike on the outside corner, 2-1. How much confidence does it instill in you if you're Alec Marsh after giving up that solo home run, your guy's picking you back up that next inning? Yeah, it shows your team's got your back, right? Just pound that zone. You know, like I, like we mentioned, Marsh did a really good job of pounding the zone. He just got to tip your cap, man. I mean, great hit there by Oregon State and, and Alex McGarry. So Marsh understands, you know, he doesn't have to have his best stuff tonight, right? He just got to get through seven, eight innings. His, his offense are going to, you know, pick him up, and, and then we transition over to the bullpen. You act like that's casual for Marsh, but he's been so good yeah. that it is. Yeah, I mean, that's what he expects. Every time I talk to him after every game, I say, hey, man, you know, great job. You look good. You know, slider's looking good, whatever. He's like, it's not even close to, to, to my best. And, right. and that's kind of the, the mindset you have to have, and, and he knows – you're going to get 7-8 out of me no matter what. I'm not coming out of the game unless it's a 7-3 inning. Another good off-speed pitch to get Armstrong. Strikeout number two on Marsh's night. There's one away in the third. That'll bring up the nine-hole hitter, Kyler McMahon. And you mentioned Marsh always saying, I have better stuff. That seems to be kind of a staple of good athletes in general. 
you never are pleased with what you're doing. You're always striving for more, and Alec Marsh has that it factor. And I think quite a few guys on both of these teams are the same way. Never settling, never being pleased with where you are as Marsh delivers a fastball into McMahon for strike one. Alec Marsh, the story, there's so many numbers you can really say that signify how good he's been. And one of them is that every single time he goes out as he delivers the 0-1, a breaking ball that fools McMahon, it's 0-2. Every single time that Marsh goes out, you can expect a quality start, or at least you assume he can give you one. 11 of his last 16 starts dating back to last year, they've been quality. And that just shows that he's the Friday night guy as the 0-2 pitch runs high. It's ball one. Giving your chance, giving your team a chance to win, right? That's your job as a Friday night starter, and Marsh does that every every time he comes, you know, and toes the rubber. McMahon behind in the count, one two. Marsh throws another fastball at 94, a little high, and McMahon's worked it back to two and two. Sophomore from Seattle, Washington, is McMahon. He came up big in that weekday game against Oregon that Oregon State eventually lost to the Ducks. He had a clutch RBI double in that comeback. Bill Short against the Ducks. Another good breaking pitch that fools McMahon. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Marsh to start his third inning. The third of the night overall for Alec. Two up, two down here in the third. How about that? Back-to-back -back strikeouts coming to you with the curveball. He's got a really good slider. That's kind of been his pitch you know, this year, but obviously he's been working on it in the bullpen. Head coach, or excuse me, pitching coach Mike Cather showing him maybe a little different grip or something like that. That's a really good curveball there from Alec Marsh. In steps Tyler Malone, who had everyone worried that was wearing maroon and gold as he led off the game with a high fly ball to right center field that was just short of the wall out there. Hunter Bishop was able to make the catch, but it looked like he almost had a leadoff home run for Oregon State. Love it there. First pitch inside for a changeup. Ground ball to the left side. Williams on a backhand, strong throw across the diamond in time. And a nice shutdown inning for Alec Marsh in Arizona State. As the Devils take the lead in the bottom of the second and then get Oregon State three up, three down in the top of the third. It's two to one Arizona State. So we're set for the bottom of the third from Muni. Welcome back, two to one Arizona State over Oregon State. And sometimes the old saying goes, numbers never lie. You've heard that before, Grant. These numbers don't lie and those records on top there's a reason why they are what they are. These two teams, obviously very good. You look at Oregon State's team ERA, which pops out at 2.78. You look at Arizona State's home runs at 50 <laughs> and 9.6 runs per game. You see why both of these teams are excelling, and that's why this weekend's going to be so much fun. Yeah, Arizona State's offense, we know it's been good, but what's cool, too, is the opponent average, just 50 points, you know, indifference between Arizona State and Oregon State's pitching. Arizona State's done what they needed to do yeah. on the mound, you know, against these teams. Just like we mentioned, you know, the four-game skid of, you know, throwing the ball all over the place and, and walking guys, but for the most part, they've done well. Carter Aldretti will lead things off for Arizona State in the bottom of the third. He looks at ball one. A walk in his first at-bat, and those 50 home runs that pop out at you when you look at Arizona State's season stats, if you will, Already tied for what they did all of last year. There's Carter Aldretti. It's not a home run, but it's another single through the left side as the Devils continue to just find some holes. The sixth hit of the night for Arizona State. Excuse me, the fifth hit of the night for ASU. All five have been singles. And another leadoff base runner for the Devils. Great job of Carter Aldretti turning on that fastball on the outer part of the plate, so he hit it off the end of the bat. Got enough speed to get past the third baseman. Now Lyle Lynn will dig in for Arizona State, looking to get some revenge after he grounded out to first base in that first inning. The bases were loaded for Lynn, and he was unable to bring anyone home. His teammates picked him up, however, last inning, scoring two runs for the Devils. And now on the first pitch, Aldretti will be running. It's a designed hit and run that will be fouled off out of play for strike one. Yeah, if you're going to do a hit and run, you want to do it with Lyle Lynn. He does such a good job of poking it to the right side and you know, handles the bat really well, so you almost count on him getting a ground ball. Great decision there by Tracy Smith and Ben Greenspan, the third base coach. Lynn at 279, four home runs, 34 runs batted in. The Devils looking to extend on a early 2-1 lead. Lyle fouls another one off out of play. 
And it's 0-2 to the Arizona State DH. There's Brandon Isert again stepping across his body, keeping his hips and everything, late coil. Then he blows it inside with a fastball. We mentioned in the first inning, does a really good job of getting in on these right-handed hitters. And that's a great example right there. Lyle behind in the count, 0-2, and Isert check swing. Did not go, 1-2. and two. Tough pitch to lay off there. Lyle Lynn must have saw something I didn't. <laughs> I'm swinging at that, no <laughs> doubt about it. So Lynn perhaps catches a break. Isert so far just one strikeout, and Lynn was very close to being rung up for the second one. Instead, he has new life. Still behind in the count, 1-2. We'll see what Isert goes to here as he'll check on Aldretti before he does. Good crowd once again here at Phoenix Muni. The Devils continue to win and soar up the rankings. The crowds continue to show up here in the Valley of the Sun. The one, two. Lynn just pokes it out, wastes a good pitch, and stays alive. Lyle done that so many times. Staying alive with two strikes. Remember, you know, pitching in inner squads against Lyle Lynn. He was the toughest one to get out. I feel like I have to throw everything at him just for him to get a swing and a miss. Lynn battling, like you said, like he always does. And for Isert, already 50 pitches thrown in just two plus innings. The one, two. Lynn, liner out to center. McMahon is there and makes the catch. One away, they'll throw back to Aldretti. Carter was about halfway to second, but he's able to scramble back in safely. So Aldretti stands at first with one away, and here comes Gage Workman. Yeah, that pitch got way too far inside for Lyle, and it kind of flared off the, the handle there. For Carter, he had to, <clears throat> excuse me, he had to kind of get out towards second base because that ball falls. He's got to be standing right. on second, so good job of getting back for sure. You look at Isert's line so far, it's not going to wow you, obviously. He's given up two runs, five hits, but if you think about all of the contact, it's been very soft. Devils haven't really squared up a single ball. They've just found holes at the right time. That's the difference in the score right now. But those five hits and a team that prides themselves on, like we talked about, home runs, extra base hits, they haven't had any so far tonight. Instead, five singles. Yeah, really, the only ball that was squared up was Trevor Hover back in the second inning. That liner over the second baseman. But like you mentioned, everything else, kind of weak contact, weak ground balls, just finding holes. We mentioned that slide the Gage Workman's on right now. And even though his average is still at 300, he was well above 300 before this slide. But even with it, still hitting 327 with runners on base. That part hasn't fallen off at all for Gage Workman. And with Aldretti standing at first, see if he can keep up with those numbers for the Devils. Isert's 53rd pitch is cranked out to left field and it'll drop right in front of McGarry, the left fielder. That one was squared up right on cue. The sixth hit of the night for the Sun Devils, the first for Workman, and two aboard now for Sam Ferry. That was a really good job of Gage Workman to get around on that baseball and, and meet it in the middle of the barrel. I thought it was going to be another one of those, you know, pitches for Icer getting in on the hands and kind of flaring it out to either foul or, or, or soft over by first base. But Gage Workman, his, his hands were too quick. He got to the ball and squared it up. Liner right in front of the left fielder. One, ama one away for Ferry, who singled. It was the first hit for Arizona State last inning. And the Arizona State backstop looks at ball one high. Obviously no action in the Oregon State bullpen yet, but at 54 pitches and six hits allowed, Isert definitely looking more hittable than any other team that's faced him. Has thought he's looked all year long. He kind of got into trouble though with those walks that right. really rose his pitch count. And so this is, I mean, this is his ball game, right? Oregon State's got an unbelievable bullpen and they're not going to use it if they don't have to. Um, I mean, if they can get as much as they can out of Isert, you still got to remember you got two more games after yep. this. So you don't want to use all your weapons. But if Arizona State can put up a couple of runs here, that could change things dramatically. One ball and one strike to Sam Ferry. Nacer gets the sign from Rochman. 
Here comes the 1-1. One -one. Ground ball right side. It'll move the runners up. They'll throw actually behind and get out Workman. So a fielder's choice. And there are two away, now runners on the corners for Arizona State. So a little bit of a dangerous play that time by Ober to field it, spin, and throw to the shortstop Armstrong, but it was a fine play, and they're now two away. So it's a 3-6 fielder's choice for those of you scoring at home. And Drew Swift will have a chance, an RBI opportunity with two away and runners on the corners. Swift singled and scored last inning for Arizona State. Two to one Devils, bottom of the third. Braden Bell, Grant Schneider on the call Friday night. Top 10 matchup here on Pac-12 Plus. Aldretti leading off a third base and Ferry stands at first. Swift fooled on a breaking ball that time for strike one. Real good pitch, 0-0. Oh, oh. You're always expecting a fastball when you're early in the count, and great job by Isert. A little off speed there. Swifty went all out for it. Isert made him pay. Big opportunity for Arizona State. Runners on the corners, two outs. Fouled off by Swift, and now Isert can do anything he wants ahead in the count 0-2. You're exactly right. Is he going to go inside? Is he going to go up and in? Maybe a little breaking ball in the dirt. He's got a good slider. Let's see what he does here, 0-2. You obviously have a great catcher behind the dish. You could trust him to bounce one in there. Another luxury of having one of the best players in the country. Here comes the 0-2. Swift lays off a fastball well outside. It's 1-2. and two. That's one of those pitches where you say, all right, I'm going to throw it as hard as I possibly can. Got to be kind of out of the zone, try to get a swing. Can't get Swifty on that. He's too too good of a hitter. That was always fun, though. When I'm 0-2, you know, when, when I was playing, I would literally try to throw the ball as hard <laughs> as I possibly could. Isert still just touched 88 with that fastball. The 1-2. Inside. Swift's worked it back to two balls and two strikes. And some of the fans wearing orange. There's a pretty good contingency of Oregon State fans down here in the Valley of the Sun. They wanted that one. That Not was a real good pitch. A real two, good changeup. 286 batting average for Swift with two outs. Here he has a two ball, two strike count with two outs and runners on the corners. Isert deals. Swift swings. It's a foul tip and he stays alive. Stays alive. Can't believe Adley Rutschman didn't hold on to that one. Would have been a foul tip into the glove for strike three. And a sigh of relief if you're Drew Swift. <laughs> two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bottom of the third inning, 2-1, to one, Arizona State on top. Again, the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Big strike at that time by Iser. That's his second K of the night. And he escapes a jam in the third. It's 2-1, to one, Arizona State, as we're through three innings on a Friday night at Muni. Welcome back to Phoenix Muni. Two to one, Arizona State on top of number three, Oregon State. We're joined by a special guest, Arizona State's Vice President for University Athletics and the Athletic Director, Ray Anderson, joins us now on Pac-12 Plus. Thanks for joining us in the booth, Ray. My pleasure, Braden. So two to one, Arizona State on top. And as we look out from a beautiful view here at Muni, it's great to see the energy obviously back around this program. You think to the U of A series a couple of weeks ago, sold out stadium, and again, a good crowd here tonight. It's great to see the energy back. Uh, indeed. You know, last couple of years we, we struggled a little bit, and uh, it's nice to see folks back and uh, fired up about it. And, you know, what can go wrong when you have a national anthem played uh, with a backdrop of the most beautiful rainbow uh, you can find in the desert? So. It's nice to be back. The team is playing well. Tracy has uh, got them inspired, and so it's fun baseball for ASU again this year. And you mentioned kind of the struggles this team had last year. Tracy Smith, your first hire when you took this job five years ago. So what's it been like seeing his success this season after struggling last year? Well, it's, it's, it's gratifying to see that he's made the changes uh, necessary to get us in all three phases, pitching, defense, and offense playing better uh, overall. 
uh, you know, there's a lot of games left. And so we're going to keep uh, grinding out uh, the season. But I think he's doing a marvelous job. He's really brought this team back. Uh, and I'm really excited about the future. Again, chatting with Arizona State Athletic Director Ray Anderson as Adley Rutschman looks at ball one inside. Marsh at 36 pitches so far. He's looked really good in his outing for Arizona State. Two to one Devils. So moving away from baseball momentarily. Big news coming out just yesterday. Basketball coach Bobby Hurley tweeting out that he's comfortable in Tempe, wants to stay here long term. And what's it been like seeing the growth of that program as well? Well, you know, we talk about competitive consistency, and that starts with, uh, in my uh, estimation, recruiting. So Bobby has really recruited well, uh, and he's brought the program back to a buzz level and excitement that we haven't had here in a while. Uh, we know that he did some uh, last two years. We went to the uh, postseason, hadn't done that back-to-back -back since 80 or 81, I believe. So uh, the progress is, is certainly uh, significant, but Bobby will be the first to tell you that we've got a lot more work to do. So we're excited about the way forward with Bobby and the way the program is progressing. Two and two now to Rutschman with one away in the top of the fourth. It's a ground ball to the right side, right into the shift. Swift fields it. Nice throw over to Torkelson in time. Two away in the fourth as Marsh continues to deal through this Oregon State lineup. We'll bring up that graphic again and you mentioned competitive consistency and what a resume it's been recently for Arizona State Athletics. Obviously, the success against U of A pops out, but all of these sports having big names and very successful runs and, you know, people have noticed around the nation and you have a smile on your face right now. It's got to be great to see hockey making the NCAA tournament. Baseball, not to the best start in program history. I mean, every single program, it seems right now, is just having so much success. Yes, I, uh, I'm pleased to see this graphic. And, uh, you know, we want all the sports to have success. And so when you look down, you see hockey and you see golf and you see wrestling and water polo uh, uh, really competing well. Uh, that's what we want to be known for. Certainly the football and basketball, men's basketball, baseball, we want to uh, be uh, very successful. Uh, the others are equally important to us here. So it's nice when you see the progress and the success we're having and again in every sport uh, we're of the mind that you know what we want to be top three in the conference top 15 in nation we don't back away from it so when you see some progress toward that uh, it's pretty satisfying for instance uh, women's basketball yep. in one poll ended up being 15 in the nation uh, and that is uh, what we aspire to do across the sport so uh, it is satisfying to see some progress. 0-2 still now to Ryan over the first baseman, battling nicely here, a 345 average for him, but Marsh trying to get his second straight three up, three down inning, and you mentioned the competitive consistency, and you also talked about the growth that you've seen over your time, so five years ago when you showed up on campus here, as a strikeout from Marsh ends the frame, a big time K, we'll stay with you momentarily, Ray. What's the biggest difference you've noticed from when you arrived on campus to what is happening right now? Well, I think there's a, a level of uh, expectations that uh, have been accepted across the board by all the coaches and all the programs that we really do aspire uh, to be uh, special, extraordinary here. And there's a buy-in to the culture uh, of those expectations and that's the biggest thing that I'm most pleased to see uh, and it takes some time and we still have some work to do uh, but I really think the uh, commitment to excellence not to be corny uh, is real here uh, and I'm very proud of that and certainly it's showing on the field on the rink on the diamond wherever you look <laughs> success all around for Arizona State and Ray we thank you again for joining us here on the broadcast. Always a pleasure. See if this game continues the way you like it right now. Two I, to one I, I, I like being ahead, yes, <laughs> indeed. Thank you so much for You're coming welcome, on. You're welcome, Braden. Back for the bottom of the fourth, and Arizona State leads two to one over Oregon State. Grant Schneider back in the chair. Another big thanks to Ray Anderson for joining us, and Trevor Alver, the leadoff hitter, will get things going for Arizona State. Two to one lead, and Alec Marsh rolled through that last inning and made Ray Anderson's appearance pretty short here on the broadcast. Exactly. Probably didn't get to ask as many questions as you wanted to. <laughs> that one's hit well the other way. Battling the wind is the left fielder, McGarry, and he had quite the adventure out there but was able to make the catch. And there's the first out in the fourth. That ball slicing, slicing, slicing. McGarry did a really good job of adjusting for out number one. 
One away, and Spencer Torkelson will dig in for Arizona State. He's reached base in both plate appearances, walked in the first, hit an RBI single last time up in the second. And Tork will dig in a 2-1 to one lead as both pitchers seemingly start to starting to get into a very nice rhythm as Isert delivers strike one. A rocky first inning, but really found his legs and is pitching well here into the fourth inning. The shift on again for Torkelson. That was the case with his RBI single last time. He beat the shift. That one's fouled off back towards us. It's 0-2. One thing that's very interesting that they're shifting with him is, in my opinion, Spencer Torkelson has done a really good job showing he can hit to all fields. And so, you know, we've seen a couple times when they shift, when teams shift against him, he just pokes it right where the second baseman usually plays. So it's kind of interesting. The thing is, is if you're going to shift, you got to pitch to the shift and that's one thing. That one's boomed out to center field. Back is McMahon. He's at the wall. Now he'll run in as the wind knocked that one down. There were some oohs and ahs off the bat. Torkelson thought he might have gotten it, but instead the wind knocks it down, and it's a simple F8 fly out. Or two away. Wow, that, that was a moonshot. That hung up in the air for a while, and you're right, the wind really knocked that down. Center fielder went all the way back to the track and had to run back in to catch that one. But what I was going to say is, you know, when when they shift, when you shift, you have to pitch to the shift. Oregon State is one of those teams. They have command of their pitches, and so they've done a really good job of pitching to the shift. Two away for Hunter Bishop. Ball one low. Bishop 0 for 1. Walked in the first, struck out his last time up. Trying to get things going on his night offensively is... That average down to 402. Can you believe that? Man. <laughs> Panic. 0 for 2 to 90, <laughs> bring it down to 402. What are we going to do? The on base percentage, probably still around 530 as he hits a bouncing ball out to second. Gretler fields it in time. Very strong inning by Isert, working through Halvard, Torkelson, and Bishop with ease. Arizona State goes down quietly in the fourth. We'll head to the fifth. 2 to 1 Devils.